Good morning, this is your week two, week commence in the 11th of January guided reading. And this week we're going to be looking at Howard Carter and his great discovery. And that discovery was, if anyone who knows, say it with me, Tutankhamun, one of the most famous pharaohs of ancient Egypt. The first thing I need you to do is click this link and it will be in Dojo as well. And this is a small video showing Howard Carter do his discovery back in 1922. So this is a part of the type text that we're going to be looking at today and it is all about Howard Carter. I want you to think about what type of text this is and how we know. This is one of your questions later on, so I'm not going to tell you the answer just yet. I am going to read it for you. I want you to read along with me at home and then pause it and then read it on your own too. So, Howard Carter is our title. The man, the myth, the guy that we are learning about over the next couple of weeks. Howard Carter achieved international fame when he discovered the intact tomb of Pharaoh Tutankhamun in November 1922. Same thing I want you to do as last week, I want you to go through, obviously you don't have this as a physical copy, but in your workbook I want you to write down any of the words that you do not know. So just like you would do in school, you would usually underline them, I want you to write them down that you would usually underline if any words you do not know or you don't quite understand the meaning of. And then later in the video, we'll go through some of the vocabulary. Second sentence. It was funded by Lord Carnarvon. Howard sparked massive public interest throughout the world. His discovery remains one of the most important ancient Egypt finds even to this day. So we've got a subheading of early life. Born in Kensington in 1874, Howard Carter was the son of the artist Samuel John Carter and Martha Joyce Carter. He spent much of his childhood living in Swaffham, Norfolk, where he grew up with his relatives. It was here that Howard got his first taste of ancient Egypt Egyptians. Nearby was Didlington Hall, owned by the wealthy Amherst family, where a substantial collection of Egyptian antiques could be found. This fascinated Howard, igniting an interest that would lead him to become arguably Britain's most celebrated archaeologist and Egyptologist of all time. So I want you to pause the video here, read it through on your own, and then put any words into your book that you do not know the meaning of. And wonder, why do you think Egyptologist is in bold? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got the next section here, and I want you to do the same, write in any words that you do not know. Mm -hmm. So, becoming an archaeologist is our next mm -hmm. subheading. By the age of 17, Howard was pioneering new methods of copying tomb decorations. This prompted the Egypt Exploration Fund, EEF. To ask Howard to assist them in the excavation of the Middle Kingdom tombs at Beni Hassan in 1891. In the following years, Howard worked under the tutelage of both prominent archaeologists and Egyptologists, and he learned a great deal. Within eight years, Howard had worked his way to the position of Chief Inspector of the Egyptian Antique Services, EAS, and within this role he supervised excavations at many ancient Egyptian sites. Again, Write in any words you do not know and have a think about why you think the word excavation is in bold. This time I want you to read this on your own at home. Again, write in any words you do not know or you do not understand for us to later discover in our vocabulary section of the lesson. So have a strong read through, read it out loud, sound out your words and any words you don't know, write them down for us and we'll figure it out as we go. So finally, we've got a little bit about the discovery and some answered fact file questions. We've got what did Howard Carter discover about the tomb? Who was Tutankhamun? And what do we know about him? Again, read through and then write down any words you do not know. You can pause the video to make sure you've got lots of time in between. 
Okay, so we're at the end of the reading extract now, and it ends with a glossary. So usually, I know that you've been looking through the extracts and you've seen those words in bold. So usually that means they're going to give you the definition at the end of the reading extract. So here we are, and we've got archaeologist, which you should know by now that we've looked at, and somebody who studies history through the excavation of sites. We've got the aristocrat, Lord Carnarvon. We've got Egyptologist, so somebody who specifically studies in ancient Egypt. We've got Epitaph, which is a tricky one to look at when you see it like that. Epitaph, which is the words written on the tombstone, which we know that Howard Carter wrote and copied Tutankhamun's. Excavation, which is a dig to get something removed from the earth, just like we did and we looked at when we looked at the artifact of the sources of evidence on Thursday. And then we've got sarcophagus, which is the stone coffin that the normal golden or metal or some kind of other um, resource is inside. So the stone coffin is there to protect the real coffin and the mummy on the inside, to protect it from tomb robbers, to protect it. And it was meant to take it into the afterlife and protect it as it goes through into the afterlife. So it's the big stone one, really, really heavy and hard to move. Before we go to the next slide, I've just done a few images of what this vocabulary might mean. So have a look at the images and see which vocabulary and which word they might match up to before we go to the next slide. So we've got obviously Howard Carter and Lord Carnarvon. Which one do you think that is based on what he is wearing? We've got some images. We've got Howard Carter here discovering Tutankhamun. We've got the sar stone sarcophagus there in the middle. We've got a lecture hall here. All words that will be in your vocabulary list or something that you may or may not understand. In the next slide, we'll talk about the different vocab and then I want you to write down a dictionary definition for me. Okay, so here's some of the vocabulary that I thought that you would have wrote down or you might have picked up and you might not really know the understanding of. So we've got quite a few. I've picked them out from all the different points of the extract. International, we should know that it means lots of different countries. We've got intact, funded, public interest, discovery, substantial, igniting, archaeologist, Egyptologist, which were in our glossary, pioneering, we should know from our space topic, excavation which was in our glossary, tutelage, supervised, aristocrat which is in our glossary as well, fabled, sarcophagus which I've just explained, preserved, lectures which is like a university when somebody like a teacher gives classes or lessons on something that they know, laid to rest, epitaph which was in our glossary as well, quotation, unearthed, voyage, chamber walls and living image of Amun. So Amun was one of the gods of ancient Egypt. So what I want you to do again, like last week, pause the video here. Any of the words that you've written down, which are on your screen right now or in your book, I want you to go and Google and have a little Google search about what the definitions are. And then in your book where you've wrote them down, you can write me a dictionary definition of what they mean. Then have a look, go back through and read the extract again. That's going to help you get a clear understanding of this text ready to answer the questions on it tomorrow. Okay, have fun!